How good can a budget smartphone be? This is the Redmi 7, which is one of the first launched under the name Redmi, which is a sub-brand that is part of the big Xiaomi family and definitely this one was overshadowed by the huge success of the Redmi Note 7, but we care about this one. What we want to find out, how much do we get for the $130 that we pay here? Let's get started. Welcome everybody, Tech Bro Channel. My name is Michael and like many of you have requested, I'll try to give you more reviews about budget-friendly smartphones. So this is as budget-friendly as it could get for a decent brand. The Redmi 7, which is the weaker version of the Redmi Note 7 that you most certainly have heard about with um, one of the first on the market 48 megapixel camera, but it's not the thing over here. We're going to review this phone a few months after its initial release and we're of course going to expect the global version with 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of local storage. From the Redmi family it's a reasonable choice which is just above $100 and its highest spec versions are below $150 so definitely it would be a good purchase for 2019. You can find and buy this phone pretty much everywhere and I managed to get some good discount codes for you and you can find more information in the description below the video. In this review, focus more on the features that make this device stand out. And that would be kind of an easy summary, especially knowing that it has been for a few months on the market already. So the first thing I'm gonna begin with is the camera's cameras. Okay, we're gonna start with the camera. Nowadays, more than ever, our smartphone is replacing the need for using a dedicated camera. Long story short, it is a good, affordable model with a dual lens setup that outputs photos at 12 megapixels. Supports phase detection autofocus. The pictures from the main cameras are rendered at 12 megapixels and the camera app is rich in options. Besides the different shooting modes, you count on a pro mode, which gives you more manual photo settings. Daylight photos are as expected good, sharp, with a lot of detail and we will start noticing the actual weaknesses of the cameras should it get darker. Time for some video samples and this one is recorded with the main set of cameras. Full HD resolution because this is the maximum and the maximum can go as high as 1080p at 60 frames per second. There also is slow motion don't count on it that much, you know. I've tried numerous applications to enable 4K recording, but nothing from what I've tried worked and looks like Xiaomi have done a good job in limitation of, of recording 4K. So it's, it's maximum full HD resolution, which is nothing bad. The bigger disadvantage is that it lacks any kind of stabilization. No optical, no electronic image stabilization, which makes your video shaky. Right now it's steady because I'm using iSteady Mobile Plus, it's a gimbal, and uh, this is one of your options. The other option to get a stable video, and actually something which is going to bring the photography capabilities of this camera to a different level, although just software enhancement, is the Gcam app. It's, it's a ported version of the Google camera that you can find on Pixel phones, and I've placed a link in the description right below the video, so you can get it and see how better the low light photos and videos are going to become using the Gcam app. The big advantage is that as soon as you record the video, although without any kind of stabilization, you upload it to Google Photos and then Google's algorithm is going to stabilize that. Oh and yeah, we just did a microphone test as well. Concerning the videos, let me present you the sponsor of this video, which can help you a lot in that area. It's an awesome tip for simple video editing called VideoProc. It's the one-stop video processing software. With full hardware acceleration, you can cut, crop, merge and add tons of effects to the scenes that you've shot. And this is how easy I can make my Redmi 7 videos shine. More information about it you will find in the description below the review. We made it to the second big part over here. That's the display with this, I would say, good-looking drop notch. You would be surprised to hear that the phone on the left costs twice more than the one on the right. Of course, some of the details are beyond the obvious. Yeah, it's an LCD display with the latest generation of Gorilla Glass. But the resolution is just HD. So yeah, 720p for this display. Something you can't really notice from uh, the distance to the camera. 
What a disappointment! Although it's perfectly in line with its predecessor, which had pretty much the same resolution and um, much thicker bezels, and I would say much worse display in terms of colors. This kind of setup makes the feeling of using the Redmi 7 satisfying. The water drop notch in the middle is just fine. Doesn't mess up with the level of entertainment that this good quality LCD panel gives you. Again, look at it. It's good even with the black backlight, which is even a little worse than the more expensive Poco F1. So simply HD resolution and a lot of color configuration options, including night mode and extra brightness mode for good daytime performance. Hopefully we can agree that this screen is good enough and we can carry on with the third main characteristic, which is really big. And yes, over here, I'm thinking of the big 4000 mAh battery, which is remarkably big, especially knowing how thin the Redmi 7 is. 4000 mAh feel pretty well paired with the Snapdragon 632. Furthermore, the performance is better than the predecessor, the Redmi 6, because of the faster CPU, which, depending on the task, is between 10 to 25% quicker in execution. Manufactured based on 14 nm process, its efficiency is good. And because the kernel seems to be optimized for greater battery life, you can count on a day and a half, up to two days, even for a power user. And you can easily go beyond three days for people that don't use that much of social media and browsing. And you know what? I'm pretty sure what's going to be your next question. How about gaming? Well, gaming with the Redmi 7 is just okay. The processor, which here is Snapdragon 632, it's not flagship great, but its higher CPU frequency and good cooling gives you the chance for enjoying even the intensive games without too much lag or too many skipped frames. We have to be fair here. We can't expect performance like the Poco F1, for example, where we count on a flagship processor. This definitely is not a gaming phone. So with some of the games, you might have to switch to medium settings. But again, the hardware is capable. And since the topic is battery life, you know that when playing games, the drain will be higher. So overall, with two to four hours of screen on time per day and browsing, reading and watching videos, solidified phone codes, Google Maps, two SIM cards, the phone can last around two days, which makes it exceptional. You've got 4000 mAh battery packed with a low resolution display and not very power hungry processor. So even for these three characteristics packed at $130, um, that makes the Redmi 7 quite a good choice. But it's not just that. Expandable storage with a dedicated slot, meaning instead of the well-known either a second SIM or a micro SD card, you can have two SIMs and still take advantage of external storage, Bluetooth 4.2, FM radio, silicon case that comes out of the box, quick charge, infrared blaster for remote control. The extra features are so many that it's tough to believe a budget 2019 model can do that much. Of course, last but not least, we're gonna talk about the price, which is really attractive. It's somewhere between $125 and $150, depending on the configuration. And when I say configuration, whether it's gonna have two gigabytes RAM and 16 ROM, or it's gonna be three gigabytes of RAM and more internal storage, it could vary. Because my primary goal every single time is to give you as fair reviews as possible, here are some disadvantages. No NFC, it doesn't surprise us at the price of 130. The charging port is micro USB. Camera, although better than the previous generation, it's not that good. You can partially improve using Google Cam application, but there's no stabilization when shooting video, no 4K, and the MIUI feels rather heavy on that CPU. And I would certainly see criticism about the build quality, although if you often watch my reviews, I have nothing against plastic on the smartphones. It's not as premium feeling as metal or glass. If you're looking for a smartphone which is a little bit more expensive than this one and way better, I would say you should think about the Redmi Note 7. Uh, earlier I called it the bigger brother. Uh, it's bigger in terms of specs because on the outside it's um, rather the same scale. But definitely for $30, $40 more you get a much higher spec smartphone with a 48 megapixel sensor. Well, don't think it makes 48 megapixel photos, it's just a marketing trick. 
Now, questions are two. First of all, um, Redmi 7 or Redmi Note 7? You know, what is more important, uh, budget or performance? And secondly, $130. Which is a phone that beats this one? Do you know such a model? I'm trying to start a conversation in the comment section below the video where I'm looking forward for your ideas and creative answers. My name is Michael. It's been so great to have you around in the last few minutes. And looking forward to see you around. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like if you enjoyed the video. And see you in the next episode. Bye!